the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so as revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, 
he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
for this special feast, the Solemnity of Corpus Christi. There is a special hymn called The Sequence. It was written by St. Thomas Aquinas. The words are in the program. I'm going to chant it. Loud, O Zion, thy salvation, loud with hymns of exultation, Christ thy King and Shepherd true. Bring him all the praise thou knowest, he is more than thou bestowest, never canst thou reach his due. Special theme for glad thanksgiving, is the quickening and the living bread today before the sad. From his hands of old partaken, as we know by faith unshaken, where the twelve at supper met. Full and clearing out thy chanting, Joy nor sweetest grace be wanting, from thy heart let praises burst, for today the feast is holding, when the institution holding of that supper was rehearsed. Here the new laws, new oblation. By the new king's revelation ends the form of ancient rite. Now the new, the old effaces. Truth away, the shadow chases. Light dispels the gloom of night. What he did at supper seated Christ ordained to be repeated, his memorial there to see, and his rule for guidance taking, bread and wine we hallow making, thus our sacrifice of peace. This the truth each Christian learneth, bread into his flesh he turneth, to his precious blood the wine. Sight hath failed, nor thought conceiveth, but a dauntless faith believeth, resting on a power divine. Here beneath these signs are hidden, priceless things to sense forbidden, Signs, not things, are all we see. Blood is poured and flesh is broken, yet in either wondrous token, Christ entire we know to be. Whoso of this food partaketh, rendeth not the Lord nor breaketh, Christ is whole to all that taste. Thousands are as one receivers, one as thousands of believers, eats of him who cannot waste. Bad and good the feast are sharing of what diverse dooms preparing. Endless death or endless life. Life to these, to those damnation. See how like participation is with endless issues rife. When the sacrament is broken, doubt not but believed is spoken, that each severed outward token doth the very whole contain. Not the precious gift divided, breaking but the sign betided, Jesus still the same abideth, still unbroken doth remain. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who hath striven, 
See the children spread from heaven, which on dogs may not be spent. Truth the ancient types fulfilling, Isaac found a victim willing, Paschal lamb its lifeblood spilling, manna to the Father sent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesu of thy love, befriend us. Thou refresh us, thou defend us. Thine eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. Thou who all things canst and knowest, who on earth such food bestowest? Grant us with thy saints low lowest, where the heavenly feast thou showest, fellow heirs and guests to be. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then 
after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. The earliest account of the institution of the Holy Eucharist comes not from the four Gospels, but perhaps as much as a generation earlier from the pen of St. Paul, who told the Corinthians that he received from the Lord what he was himself handing on to them. That on the night before he died, our Lord took bread, blessed, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body, which is for you, and likewise the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Paul tells them, as often as you do this, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. There are three things worth noting about Paul's words. First, he received this from the Lord himself. Paul did not know the Lord in his earthly life, this was a special revelation and given to him by the risen and glorified Lord. Secondly, it is both a receiving and a handing on. And third, it is a proclamation, but a proclamation made not principally in word, but in action. This dynamic of receiving and handing on is the life of the church. Father Ben, you're here today because your parents received from their parents the Catholic faith and handed it on to you. Your siblings likewise received from your parents that faith and are handing it on to their children. This is no mere human or mundane activity. This is a graced activity. It's the vocation of all the baptized to receive and to hand on that faith. No need to be flashy, much less original. Just be faithful. This is the vocation of all the baptized. It is no less than a participation in the temporal missions of the Son and the Holy Spirit, that great creative and redemptive work issuing forth from the Father through the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit to reconcile, heal, and restore all things in Christ. And every baptized person participates in a created and graced way in the temporal mission of the Son and the Spirit as he or she receives that faith and hands it on. Priests participate in this mission, to quote our esteemed rector, in a particular way. That is to say, yesterday at the cathedral, at the hands of Bishop Rhodes, you were configured to Christ the priest as a sign of the change in character imparted to you. Your hands were anointed with sacred chrism. And every action of a priest's life is either directing someone to the altar or radiating out from that altar. Everything, every word, every gesture, every act of priestly life is centered on the Eucharist. This is the work of the church. This is priestly work. The Eucharist, as it were, is the hub of a wheel, spokes around which are the other sacraments, either directing souls toward the Eucharist or radiating out from the Eucharist in grace. Baptism orders souls to the sacrament and capacitates them to receive all the sacraments. Matrimony is a sacrament which is a living witness to the mystery of the altar. The sacrament of penance restores sinners to full communion, to the life of grace, and reconnects them, as it were, to the altar. 
the sacrament of anointing, the power of Christ's victory over death radiates from this altar and is extended to those who are sick or dying. This is the life of the church. This is the receiving and handing on, which is its heartbeat, the pulse which is regulated not merely by our actions or choices, but by the Holy Spirit guiding the church for 2,000 years in this act of receiving and handing on centered around the Eucharist and in which the work of the priest is indispensable. Father Ben, your formation for priesthood began on March 6th, 1996 when you were baptized. And that formation continued in the home of your domestic church, fostered by your family. It continued at the Pontifical College Josephinum and at Mount St. Mary's. And it's beautiful to reflect on the fact that every moment of your life up until today led to this moment in your life, to this place, to this altar. And from this day forward, every thought, every action, every moment of your life henceforth proceeds from this place, this moment, this altar. The great axes of your life, heaven and earth, your past and your future, meet and coincide here, fixed at the altar of Jesus Christ. That is your identity. That is our identity. And it's also this great act that we're about to celebrate, Christ's act, in which we participate and you offer in persona Christi Capitis. This great act is a proclamation, a proclamation of the victory and lordship of Jesus Christ. The world is a very sad place right now. It has been since the fall. There's darkness, there's doubt, there's despair. There's a great deal of hurting and pain. There are a lot of people who are lost. There are people who are suffering. And every act of your life is a proclamation centered in the Eucharist of Christ's victory over all of that. My son and now my brother, your work, our work, our shared work as priests is to extend the victory of Jesus Christ to proclaim his lordship over every situation, every time, every place. To proclaim to a culture that's at best resistant to the gospel and at worst hostile to it, his victory. To extend that grace to the life of sinners. Father Ben, you will draw souls into the kingdom of God when you baptize them. You will restore souls to grace in the sacrament of penance. You will feed souls with the body and blood of our Lord. You will witness the marriages of Christian men and women whose lives become a sacrament of the mystery of the altar itself. Every act of your life will become a proclamation of the victory of Jesus Christ at this altar today and every day. Every work of the church pales in comparison and effectiveness to what the church does at the altar. We have to trust that fact. We have a tendency to want to be activists. The Lord calls us, no. Rely on the power of my sacrifice. I'm sharing it with you, the Lord tells us. It will be your strength. It will be your hope. It will give you what you need. And Father Ben, you make that now available to the people of God here and in Elkhart and anywhere else you go in your priesthood. May God lead you. May God feed you. And may God speed you. I believe in one God. 
Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. In the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. For Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy, especially the new priests of our diocese, that the Lord may keep them faithful in their ministry to the Christian people, we pray to the Lord. For government leaders and all who exercise authority over others, that the Lord may give them the grace to pursue the common good in true harmony, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For favorable weather and an abundance of the fruits of the earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those traveling by land, sea, or air, for those who are held captive, and for all prisoners, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For us gathered here, that the grace of this feast of the body and blood of Christ may draw us into, deeper into the mystery of the Eucharist and its meaning in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving to God for conferring the holy priesthood on Father Ben Landergan, and that other sons of this parish may generously respond to God's call to serve him and his people as ministers at the altar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, especially Christy Landergan, Harold Landergan, and Robert and Maxine Bell, that those who have fed on the bread of eternal life may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We ask all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and of all his holy church. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you. Also for those, be pleased, O God. 
God, we pray, who blends us in the knowledge of your previous offering in every good respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took the bread and folded it in gentle hands, and with eyes raised to heaven. Remember also, Lord, your servants, and all who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercy. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us.
all restraint from sin and save from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
before you may be seated, before the final uh, prayer and blessing, just a few points of announcement and a few thanksgivings to give. Uh, first, after Mass, there will be a reception in the parish hall. Um, myself and all the servers and my family will get a few pictures here in church, but I'll be over there as quick as possible. We will come back in here and try and be as quiet and reverent as we can so that the church remains a place for prayer. Uh, and then many thanksgivings. Uh, first of all, to the parish. Uh, thank you for supporting me and praying for me uh, these last seven years that I've been in seminary uh, all the way until today. I, I can't believe I'm here. Uh, it's wonderful. And it's wonderful to be back at the, the early morning Mass. When I thought about when did I want to do my first Mass, it was the morning Mass, the Mass that I always went to growing up. Um, thank you to uh, my servers, my nephews, uh, the many seminarians who showed up, uh, my sister and cousins doing the music. Uh, and a big thank you to all the priests who showed up. I had no idea this many would come. I thought this was when they were all doing Mass at their own parish, but I guess they don't work. Uh, <laughs> But a couple in particular, um, the homilist was Monsignor Michael Heinz. He's the academic dean at Mount St. Mary's Seminary and also a priest of this diocese. And he is a, a formator for many men, a spiritual director, a teacher. And particularly for me, he was my, my formation advisor these past four years. So he was a, a mentor, uh, a coach, uh, and a friend. And many times I came to him with questions, uh, issues, concerns, and joys. And we shared those. Also, a big thank you to Father Dave Voorhees, uh, the pastor of this parish and my pastor for the past five years. Uh, Father Dave, you are one of the most humble men I know, and you love people with the heart of Christ. That is the greatest compliment I can give. Um, Deacon Mark Hellinger, son of the parish, uh, and many other young clerics here who are my friends from seminary and friends from the diocese. And finally, a thank you to all of my family. Uh, as Monsignor alluded to, I am here because of my family, uh, the faith that my family passed on to me. Uh, in particular, my grandparents, uh, Patrick and Susan, who've always set the tone and been the model for our whole family, and also my parents, uh, Daniel and Linda. I have a few things that it's traditional to pass on to them. I'll be giving my dad uh, the first confession stole that I heard my first confession in. Uh, it was from my father that I learned about justice and mercy, uh, always given out of love. And so I hope to, to be like that myself as a spiritual father uh, and in, in the confessional particularly. I'll be giving my mother uh, this white cloth, which is called the manaturgium. This is what was wrapped around my hands yesterday after they were consecrated at the ordination. Um, traditionally, it's given to the mother, and when she dies, she'll be buried with it. That when she uh, comes before God and he says, uh, what, have you, what have you done for me? She will say, I have given you my son as a priest. And then additionally, on the altar is a little crucifix that came from the Landrigan family farmhouse uh, after Uncle Harry, our great uncle, passed away. I inherited it, um, but I wanted to use it today for my first Mass and give it to Grandma and Grandpa.